Hey there, this is Jenny from Southern Savers. Uh, welcome to our Monday night Google Hangout. We are going to chat all about back to school savings and I guess pretty much anything else that you guys want to cover as well. Um, as we get started, if you have questions, make sure that you're over on the Google Plus Hangout page so that you can click and enter to kind of enter the Q&A app is what they call it. Uh, but you can enter all of your questions right there and we will get to probably everything tonight. Very rarely do we leave questions hanging. Um, and they don't have to be back to school related. So if you want to just chat about the great deals at Rite Aid this week, we can do that too. Whatever you have on your plate that you want us to cover, we will try to get there. In terms of back to school, I mean, this really could cover the just a huge gamut of things, um, but this is back to school season and I know as a mom I'm not really ready to think about that. School for us doesn't really start for another five weeks with our homeschool co-op, um, but the deals started last week really. So if you haven't started shopping you're actually a week late into all of the sales that are out there. Uh, so to get the best deals, we have to talk about it now. We can't wait and talk about this in August. You've already missed an entire month of sales going on at Staples and Office Depot, Office Max. So just so we're covering everything and we're not missing out on any deals that are out there. So let's start with supplies, just the basic stuff from crayons to paper to spiral notebooks, whatever it is that's on your kids' lists. I know for a lot of parents, you don't even have that list yet you gotta just make it up. Uh, we, you can't afford to wait until the list comes out and really you should be demanding from your schools that they put the list out because the school is missing out. If you do, can't buy everything they want, um, they're, they're the ones that are gonna get hurt in the end for everybody. So what I want you to do now if you don't have a list is let's start thinking about what did we use last year. Let's at least buy those items um, and start looking for some other things. If your kids end up not needing it, donate those things. But you are going to grab them for next to nothing because you got them on sale now than paying full price for these items the night before school starts. So grabbing the best deals on school supplies means watching the staples and watching the Office Depot ads. Um, those are where the best deals are. Now Office Depot, Office Max. It's really the same ad. Let's just I don't know. They need to come up with one name because that's just too much to handle. But watching those two ads, you're going to grab lots of things for a penny, tons of things that are 50 cents or less. If you don't even have one of those stores in your area, don't panic because Walmart will price match any store within a 50 mile radius. So as long as you have one of those stores within a 50 mile radius, you're good. All I need to do is take the Staples ad or the Office Depot, Office Max ad into Walmart with me and I will get the exact same price for those products. Keep in mind if the items on sale are house brands, so it's Staples pink erasers, you cannot price match that in Walmart. They don't sell staple brands. So it needs to be a name brand product for you to price match it in Walmart or Target Walmart is going to be easier and it's not often that I'm going to say that but price matching in Walmart is actually easier than price matching in Target. Uh, in Walmart you're going to do it at the register, in Target you're going to do it at customer service and in Target you're going to feel like they have decided you're a criminal. So just stick with the Walmart price match um, and get all the deals that you can there. They have a bigger supply than the office supply store too so you're not going to drive yourself crazy driving all the way to Staples to find out that they ran out three days ago. Uh, Walmart has plenty of crayons or whatever the deal was on the national brand items. So that's our tiny school supply deals. We're going to see other ones pop up too. Target's got some free uh, little portfolios this week. You could also get free index cards. There's a coupon for a um, dollar fifty off three school supply items, school or office supply items, and there's a lot of things in the school supplies section in Target that's less than fifty cents. I was just there thirty minutes ago, um, so like uh, pencil sharpeners, index cards, little plastic portfolio, two pocket folders. Um, 
a number of things that are in the 50 cents or less range. So with that little dollar fifty off three Target printable coupon, that's three of them. Remember, you're allowed one Target printable coupon per transaction, but if you had a second computer, you could technically print a second coupon. Your husband could buy three more right behind you in another transaction. So if you wanted to just grab some small things and call it a date night at Target, you can. We're going to see more Target back to school deals pop up, I have no doubt. But this is the first week that we've seen some sales align with good coupons. Uh, and school supplies will continue. We also see the grocery stores following suit. Publix has a ton of things that are buy one, get one. Those buy one, get one deals don't rush out and feel like you have to get them today. Publix back to school deals run all the way through back to school, the exact same products. Um, They're not going to change the buy one, get ones much at all. So just grab them the next time you're in Publix and don't really worry about it. But you have back to school markers, um, tons of pencils and pens, scissors, and a lot of other things that Publix has done. Um, let's see if we, we have, oh, Julie, uh, I thought you had a back to school question, but she's just more saying that she's really excited to learn um, in terms of back to school shopping. With um, one comment that Julie said is reusing backpacks, et cetera. Um, I, yes, that is definitely a huge way to save on back to school. And for that comment, just a good point to remember here is that there are some products well worth purchasing quality products on. So you can run into Target and you can buy Hello Kitty backpacks and all kinds of fun things like that. But anytime I'm going to get a backpack and it's got a character's face on it, odds are it's not the best backpack. Um, so this is one place where I hope parents can win and not kids. Um, I'm not anti-character, but you are paying a ton of money for that face and it's not going into quality on most of those products. So I, I encourage you to push your children towards um, higher end quality backpacks versus a higher end character backpack. Quality backpack being like Jansport, um, the Swiss gear lines usually hold up well. You, you'll see it when you, you'll know when you see it. But for us, a lot of us can think of it too. I have a Jansport backpack that I had in high school. I'm not telling you when I graduated from high school, but it was not recently. Uh, and I still have that backpack. When I go on airplane trips, that backpack comes with me a number of years later. And odds are my parents paid maybe. 45, 50 bucks for that um, a while ago. Same is going to hold for you. Putting that money into that backpack, it's going to last for multiple kids. Pass it on down uh, or on to siblings, cousins, wherever. It's a huge money saver. I agree with Julie. Lunch boxes and thermoses probably aren't going to last past this year. But Julie, we don't do lunch boxes for our kiddos. Yes, we homeschool, but we do a homeschool co op one day a week. So we pack a lunch. Um, there's always a parent with them, but we still pack lunches to go. And for us, lunches, I would rather do um, a paper bag than dealing with a lunch box because when I did send them with a lunch box, we lost it or it got left there and we had to go back and get it or it just was a number of issues. So I became a disposable bag girl. I'd rather find deals on lunch, ba lunch bags which we will see sales on. They were free last year at Target um, and go crazy on those lunch bags and dealing with a lunch box any day of the week. I know some schools probably require them, but that is the one item that I do not regret not having in homeschool land. Um, if anybody else has specific back to school questions, feel free to ask away in the Q&A app section of the Hangout. Other sections to kind of cover for back to school um, for older kiddos. I know I saw one person mention uh, in kind of the, just the comments on the Hangout page that you have kids that are not really kids anymore and they're heading off to college soon. So for dorm rooms and um, curriculum and all of that for textbook sides, it's incredibly pricey. I'd say college back to school almost feels more painful than eighth grade back to school any day. So all of the parents that have just folks going into grade school, just take a moment and think about your college counterparts. 
college expenses, the best way to save, honestly, please look in, have your kids look into renting textbooks. And the other big thing that I would recommend, I know as a parent you want them to be all ready for the class, um, but I would actually say let's not buy the textbooks until after class has started. Go through one of the, you know, sit, have them attend the class, obviously. They sit through one class. Let's see, even talk to the professor. How many of these are really going to be required? Um, or renting the textbook, you can rent for even less than a semester. So they rent, they can rent for a month. Uh, at the end of the month, if they decide they're using it, they can extend the rental. But I can't tell you how many textbooks were put on the list to purchase for college classes and never used. The professor never consulted them, and it's just a big old waste of money in the end. Uh, college textbook rentals, you can even do that through Amazon, but there are a lot of websites out there that do it, and they even run coupon codes. So if you're going to get them interested in it, you can still get them to save on it. But that's a huge one for textbooks. Even in the homeschool land, we can rent textbooks too. So if you have kiddos that are in the high school ages um, for homeschool, look into renting their curriculum and their textbooks rather than buying it. Um, it's hard in the high school curriculum to purchase textbooks and then plan to pass those down to future kids because, uh, and they love to do this in the publishing industry, they like to put out new editions all the time. And maybe they've updated something big, but odds are they haven't. Um, the hard part for you is going to be finding any kind of materials that go along with that curriculum. As the older it gets, the harder that's going to be. So if I'm renting curriculum instead, uh, it's going to be a savings all the way around, but you're also not going to have outdated material in just a couple of years. Um, for us, in the homeschool realm, we do classical conversations, and we've already seen that in the last three years, entirely new books uh, to go along with all of the curriculum and new handouts, and while they say they're not going to do it that often, you still see it. So it's just kind of realizing that we can't purchase things super long term to always pass down um, to future kids. Some curriculums you can. Uh, we've used lots of Saxon already with numerous children. Um, uh, Len is sharing too with textbooks you can get them online much cheaper. Yes, do iPad downloads. And this is actually becoming the thing in public school systems. In the school district that we live in, kids can bring an e-reader or a tablet device to school and they will assign the children their textbooks on the tablet. They won't give them a textbook to lug back and forth to school. They have it right there on the tablet which is very neat in theory. I don't know how much I would trust a sixth grader with a tablet device that they can't lose, um, but <laughs> maybe it works out. It is significantly cheaper for the school districts and it's significantly cheaper for parents to individually to look at the download versions. Uh, also when you're going into download versions, see if it will come with any kind of updates for new editions as they come out. Uh, so it's just something to look into based on whatever you're getting. So when you think of you know, buying computer software, we have you know, an iOS device even on your phone. You bought the phone, well Apple gives you new updates. You'll see the same thing happen in textbooks as well if you have the electronic versions. So it can save you in multiple ways. Good uh, point, Lynn. Virginia asks, will there be good sales during the back-to-school tax-free holidays, and will all stores be automatic and not applying tax, or do you need to bring it up at customer service? Great question. Um, first off, tax-free holidays are different depending on the state that you live in. So in the South, we do not have tax-free holidays in North Carolina. Um, there are no tax-free holidays, I think, in, I'm trying to think, Mississippi. There were a couple states that didn't have them. North Carolina, this is new to you guys. They just repealed tax-free holidays July 1st of this year. Not happening. Um, everywhere else, a tax-free holiday is usually the first weekend in August or the second weekend in August. So just check your dates. I posted them on Sunday so you can look on Southern Savers and find the full list of what's included, the limits, etc. Every state had different limits, different, um, different dates. 
on and on and on. How is it going to work at the register? The stores are supposed to be required to have the register automatically handle that sales tax. Keep in mind your limits for your store um, or your limits for your product. So a lot of states have limits on the value of the item. So clothing, for instance, in a number of states is tax-free as long as the article of clothing is $100 or less. Not the total purchase, just each article of clothing. So you could buy $1,000 worth of clothes. You just need to make sure that every single thing that you buy is less than $100. Personally, to buy my children an article of clothing that costs more than $100 would probably make me ill. So I can't even imagine having that problem. Um, but if you do, just, just keep in mind that that's going to apply, that cap out value. So that was clothing for a lot of states. A lot of states had school supply limits of around $20 or $30 per item. And computers had a limit, most of them between $750 and $1,000 per computer. No limit on the number, so just so we're fully understanding that. Um, Louisiana has a total purchase of $2,500 uh, allowed. It's just up to $2,500. South Carolina, just because we're awesome in South Carolina, we have no limits. Um, so you can buy whatever you'd like, and it will all be tax-free as long as it fits the requirements. Will we see sales on those items? Now that we've covered all that. Yes. Is it worth waiting to buy all your school supply needs that weekend? No. So you will see some sales if you want clothing or electronics, more expensive electronics. That's the weekend to wait for. We're going to see uh, the office supply stores, Walmart, they're all going to put computers and everything else like that on sale because really the sales tax, this is a benefit for them. They know you're coming to the store for the sales tax discount that has no impact on them whatsoever and now they can go in and give you a sale on top of it and you're super excited. So we will we'll probably also see Staples release uh, an in-store coupon. They have one this week for $5 off any $25 purchase. We'll probably see that again that weekend. We'll see a lot of clothing stores release coupons. So Old Navy, Gap, etc. Just any kind of clothing deals that you want, that's probably a great weekend to wait. The hard part is that it's going to be insane. Um, so if you want to go, find out when the mall opens. Be there when they open. Do not try to go clothing shopping at 3 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon because you will regret every second of that. But clothing and high ticket items, those are the only two things that I would really put off for a tax-free weekend. Everything else, grab and penny items now that we're seeing in Staples and Office Depot, Office Max, and the 50 cent items. The, the tax savings on that is pennies, literally, on a dollar item. It's, it's just not worth putting those tiny purchases off, missing the penny item in the 50 cent sale just to save on the tax. So just high ticket clothing and electronics. Uh, and Anne asks again, is there a tax free weekend? There is not Anne. North Carolina has canceled it. They canceled it on July 1st. Uh, so no tax free weekend in the state of North Carolina. Um, more back to school, if you are looking for um, electronic devices, let's kind of go computers for a second. I've gotten a lot of emails on this. How do you know what a deal on a computer is? Uh, we're seeing a lot of them on sale and a great example of what to look for is a deal that's at Staples this week. So we have a Toshiba laptop that's on sale at Staples this week. I want to say it's like $239. It's an incredible price for a laptop. But whenever you're looking at buying computers, please look at the whole picture, not just the computer and the price. Toshiba is not a bad name, but I got to look at what's in the computer. Um, so the biggest thing, if you are not a computer person, that you need to look at is how much memory and what kind of processor does this computer have? Intel is the name brand. AMD is the off brand. Um, so we've got Intel processors, but then we have numerous levels of Intel processors. The Staples laptop that is on sale this week is an Intel Celeron processor. You are talking about a processor that came out probably about six years ago. Um, 
that is not a good thing in computer land. Do you know how heavy computers were? Six, I mean, like so much changes in six years that buying it just because it's this crazy good price doesn't mean you're going to be happy three months from now. Um, Intel Celeron, then we've got a couple more, and then you get to the ones that everyone's really buying right now, which are the i3, the i5, and the i7. Those are the, pen, the Intel um, processors inside the main laptops that we're seeing on sale. i3 is entry level. So here's i3, entry level. Celeron's like out of the picture. It's so low. Celeron, boom, low. i3 is, is entry level. i5 is going to be able to handle a little bit of heavy processing, heavy lifting. If your kids are, you know, going into some computing classes and they've got to write code or they're going to need to do more than just Google things, i5. I7 is, we've got graphic designers here. We need to run some heavy processors. We need to run some heavy video card stuff. Then we need to get the, the top of the line I7. You can go above that and get dual processors and all kinds of things like that. But I would say for the majority of computer shoppers, you want to look for an I3 or an I5 or a compatible AMD off-brand processor. But that Staples laptop deal this week, not necessarily one to go tearing out the door for um, because the minute you try to get it to process something, get it to think about something, it's going to just stop. Uh, how many of you have tried to print coupons and the minute you go to hit print on the, on the screen, you can't do anything until the coupon has finished printing because it took every ounce of your laptop's thought to be able to do it or your computer's thought happens to the best of us, this is exactly what we're talking about. So you have to pay attention to the processing speed on a laptop and not just go to driving out for the first crazy low price you see on that. Uh, we are going to see really good prices on the i3s, the i5s, and the i7s. And they've already started. We saw one for less than $300 last week. Um, and I would say $300 to $399 is a great price for a great laptop. So just kind of pick your price point and pick the things that you want that laptop to have and then wait. Do not wait past the second week in August. If that is all you got from that. Um, after the second week in August, we will not see really amazing laptop sales anymore. And for most of you, that gets you through sales tax
Okay. I don't know if you guys can see me. My computer must have, you know, decided that I was making fun of it. I have no clue. Um, we were talking about computers, and in terms of computer sales, the best prices that we're going to find will be before August 15th. We tend to see after August 15th, you're talking about last minute computer shoppers, and the stores know that, and they don't push prices as low as they do before. And that may seem crazy, but it's what we see every year. So if you're looking at that, this is a great time. This is actually better than Black Friday. So if you want a computer, this is the time of year to grab one. If you want a printer, this is a great time of year to also grab a printer. Um, so just so you're aware of everything to grab. Okay. Woo. I don't know. Let's see. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to keep on entering. Um, Future Faith Freedom is asking, are we still having uh, a homeschool one in South Carolina? We are. Um, it is the first weekend in August, so just so you know the weeks to look for. Um, the very first weekend in August is uh, usually when most of the states are doing it. Um, another question that isn't uh, back to school, Norman asks, will I do another video series where we shop four weeks at CVS? Yes, it was my plan to do one um, again this month and things just got kind of crazy. <clears throat> but hopefully we can do it again maybe in August, we'll see. Um, so for right now, we're just sticking with trying to get out. The, today I did go to Rite Aid. There are some amazing deals at Rite Aid this week and well worth the trip, though I am not a Rite Aid lover. Um, but you can get free shampoo, free toothbrushes, free mouthwash, free star, uh, Starbucks, a uh, number of other things. So just to point you to another store possibly unless you live in Florida and you can't do the the Rite Aid thing. Um, I guess to continue on with back to school, you guys uh, don't have a lot of questions and or we are having more technical difficulties than I know of. I don't know. Hopefully you all can see to be able to ask away if you do have questions. Um, but in terms of other back to school things that are on a lot of folks lists, Keep in mind that not everything that we need back to school is supplies. Uh, so if you have kiddos that are um, going to public school, a lot of public schools will put other things like uh, Ziploc bags and hand sanitizers and Kleenexes. So as you ponder all the deals that are out there, make sure you're looking for those items too. Uh, as they will probably be on the list if you don't already have one. And if they're not, you'll probably will use Ziploc bags in your own house, but uh, that way you're not missing out on a few hidden things that you're not thinking about before your list comes out. Um, Lynn asks, when the stores are out of stock, is it okay to ask for a substitution? Yes, Lynn, it is, and a number of store managers will offer it before you even ask. It depends on the store, too, so they'll also a lot of them will give rain checks. Uh, it just depends on what you want. If I'm in CVS, for instance, and CVS has a deal and I want to grab it, they're out of it, I actually want the rain check because I can get the deal, I can get the reward from the deal whenever I come back. I don't need to worry about missing out on it right now and not having the deal. If I'm in Rite Aid, if I'm in Walgreens, the rain check doesn't do me any good. I want the substitution. I want to be able to still get the same deal and get the rewards this week. If we're talking back to school deals and I hit Staples and Staples is long out of whatever the penny item was, it's really going to depend on the store manager, but most of them in the office supply world are going to point to their ad and show you in really fine print where it said limited supply. Um, so that's where I would point you for the office supply, penny and 50 cent items to probably price match those deals in Walmart or Target uh, just because we have the larger supply. But our drug stores, our grocery stores, they will all offer rain checks and or substitutions if you ask for them. 
Um, My daughter will be attending college in Kentucky and we live in Georgia. Will we save money buying supplies in Kentucky when we get there or now? I would honestly say let's get some things now. Uh, you're going to see things throughout the, the next four weeks before you send her off that she will use and you can easily stick in the car and take with you. What I would focus on when you get there are the larger items because that's the joy of sending a kid to a dorm room is the minute you get there you're going to realize, wow, I did not realize the little hole you're about to live in and um, the things that we need to add on to that we weren't planning on. I remember my parents dropping me off. My dorm was incredibly old and we immediately went out with my newfound roommate uh, and bought a dehumidifier because you couldn't sit on the floor without your pants getting wet. There was just water everywhere. Uh, you know, it's those items that I would rather you be, have the money for because you saved and you grabbed everything now. You weren't sitting there in Kentucky trying to buy everything she needed for a class. Um, you, you handled that. Keep in mind, too, college-wise, the supplies that she needs are what she uses already in high school. So as she studies in high school, if she's an index card girl, let's send her with index cards. But these professors aren't going to ask her to have markers and crayons, and they really could care less what supplies she needs. Most college professors, the only thing they're going to ask is that she purchase. It depends on her college, too. Um, but she'll need to purchase blue books and scantrons, and that you can't get in, tam in a Target or any other store. You're going to have to get those at the bookstore on campus. But other than that, it's you just buying her pencils. The other big things are going to be what she wants for her dorm room to decorate where she's living. If she has a roommate, get them to work it out now. Figure out who's bringing the TV and who's bringing, uh, you know, split up the larger ticket items letting them kind of work that out now before they even get there is huge so that you can go in with all those things uh, and save money for the extra things that you never knew were coming. Um, when you do rain checks for things like the penny deals and office supply stores, do you have to have the paper ad or does the electronic ad work? Now, first off, for office supply stores, getting rain checks on the penny items is going to be a hard sell. Most of them don't offer rain checks. However, if I wanted to price match those, so I, you know, you did go to Staples. They have no more of the penny item pencils. It was a name brand pencil. You want to head to Walmart or Target, please take the ad. Walmart is okay with electronic ads. Target can be iffy depending on whoever you have, um, but as long as you have some way to show them the ad, they will let you have the sale. Keep in mind it has to be a national brand product and not a house brand. Um, is it a bad idea to do one big transaction at CVS um, and leave with extra care bucks? Personally, I would say it's not the best plan. So to split up your transactions or your purchases into smaller purchases so that I pay for number one with what I already have. Maybe I had 10 bucks in extra care bucks from last week. I use that to pay for number one and I try to make that first transaction equal 10 bucks. So they tell you your total due is $10 and you hand them $10 and they're pretend money. And then whatever I get back from this transaction, I'm going to use that to pay for the next one. And so on and so forth. Doing maybe three, a max of four, and then leave. Keep in mind um, that I don't want to pay much out of pocket, which it looks like you're doing. You're saying you paid you know, $1.51 and left with $22 in extra care bucks. That's great. Um, for me, I don't like to have a ton of extra care bucks. I like to have maybe 10. And I like smaller transactions because you have less of a chance to screw up. Uh, it's not me putting a ton of stuff on the counter to realize that somewhere in the middle of that, an item that I bought wasn't the price that I thought it was going to be. But it's hard to tell that when it's $42 on the counter. Uh, you're off trying to figure out what item here didn't ring up the way it was supposed to ring up. You know, If we're dealing with three products at a time, you got a lot, a lot tighter control on if something didn't ring up right or the coupon didn't scan, or whatever it might be, um, versus this really big transaction. The other problem is that spending $22 in extra care bucks can be really hard. 
CVS can have some bad weeks and nothing on sale uh, and you're just stuck with a lot of extra care bucks and you're waiting for some deals. This week, I would say, is actually not that great of a week at CVS. I'm not really that thrilled. It's probably why I went to Rite Aid tonight. Uh, but you, at the same time with $22, should you find. There are some scary moments where you'll end up with a ton. For me, on Black Friday last year at CVS, I left with over $75 in extra care bucks. Turn around and trying to use that before they expire, that is hard. Uh, it just and to use them wisely, not to just go in and have some huge spending spree, uh, but to use them on deals and continue and keeping them going. It's much easier with smaller transactions. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to think in my head if we've covered everything back to school wise. And one other big thing I wanted us to hit on was on donations. I know for a number of folks, um, odds are not people that are watching, but for folks that don't have kids, I encourage you to get them to at least run out for the penny and the 25 cent items that we're going to see uh, and grabbing just a few of them and think about the people that can use them, whether it's your church or it's just giving them to charities. Back to school drives are huge uh, because there's no WIC, there's no uh, food stamps to pay for these products, but these kids still need them. So creating small backpacks and having them set or asking your kid's teacher, what kind of supplies can we get for you? Most teachers, they get a whopping $75 to pay for classroom supplies for the year. So what can we grab now looking at the deals that are out there and go ahead and get for you? Another big one, isn't charities right now, but a lot of the really cheap crayons and other things are perfect for Operation Christmas Child boxes. So if you've never done that, it's a lot of fun. Uh, your kids pack a little shoe box and you send it overseas. They even get to find out where it went. So they'll find out what city or and what country the box ended up in. Uh, you can study that and learn about it. You can write letters to the folks in the boxes and a lot of them will write you back. But you can fully stock some boxes super cheap with penny and 25 cent items during back to school season. I actually know of some churches that do their full Operation Christmas Child campaigns during the summer so that it's less stressful during Christmas season. Um, more things back to school wise, we are also going to see a lot of online deals. And so some folks wonder with online deals, um, is it better to grab those than to grab store? And this is a new one. Amazon is doing some back to school deals. They have 62 cent index cards and things like that. They're trying to beat the local retailers, but keep in mind that you've got to add in shipping unless you have Amazon Prime. And even with Amazon Prime, you still have to have a set amount. They're not going to just ship you 62 cent index cards. Is it worth the deal? Um, this is where I would point you back to Target. Target will price match Amazon. So before you start going to Amazon and thinking, well, I'm just going to get it all here, I'd rather you drive to Target and get Target deals, price match Amazon deals, price match Staples deals. You can still get it all in one place, but I can get the best of all the deals right here and not pay shipping. So if that's what you're wanting to do, I'd almost push you off of online shopping for back to school and into the stores and most of us are already there too. For clothing deals we did mention the tax free holidays. Uh, best stores to be in clothing wise, we're already seeing some of those deals online now at the Children's Place through today. Crazy good sales. If you can hop off of this when we're done and hop onto the Children's Place, they've got shorts and t-shirts for $1.49 and free shipping. Uh, so okay, go crazy. Our Goodwill sells shorts and shirts for $3 a piece, so I'll take them for $1.50, and they're new. The Children's Place is hands down probably one of the biggest places we get clothing from. Thread Up is another option if you're okay with used. They do have some new items, uh, but Thread Up carries mostly all name brand, Baby Gap, um, Gap, Old Navy, uh, Lane, uh, what is it? The Loft and Taylor and on to brands I've never even heard of before. Uh, name brand clothing, it's 
mostly used. It's in very good condition and it's savings up to like 80, 90 percent. We actually just got a box in today of clothes for our eight, 18 month old. I don't even know how she, how old she is, uh, but pants and whatnot. We didn't pay more than probably 350 for most of what's in the box per item. Um, so you can definitely go and get some good deals online. Kohl's is my kind of number two, number three choice. Kohl's has been running 30% off coupon codes on top of sales and they are offering Kohl's cash right now. So if you've got clothing deals to do and you're okay with shopping online, you can actually do better online with clothes than you can do in the store. Uh, someone asked me on the Children's Place deal today, can we get it locally? You could. This is a great example of why to shop online because if I head to my local children's place, this is a clearance sale. It's $1.49 clearance. You're going to deal with just the supply that's in that store versus a huge supply at the children's place online. So if you're wanting to shop clearance deals for clothes, local actually isn't the best option online 99% of the time. They've got more supply because they're coming from a warehouse versus one store supply. And you may find a store that's willing to call other stores to see what they have, but they're not going to be super excited about it on clearance deals. Um, Denise asks, will you be able to see this later? Yes, this as soon as we're finished will all be saved and you can watch it on um, this Google Plus page that you got here from or our YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash southern savers. You can watch it forever if you wanted to. Um, Norman asks, will I do a video to show uh, my stockpile? I can. Uh, I'm not currently, I'm currently like in a little bonus room that we have and I'd have to walk all the way through the house to <laughs> show that to you now, but um, my stockpile isn't incredibly organized. I tend to be a get home from the grocery store and let nine-year-olds unpack the groceries. So things can end up in unique places and I'd have to go organize it all before I started uh, giving people tours of it. Um, but we can definitely uh, add that to the video list coming up soon. Um, in terms of any other questions, I'm so cool to hang around here for 15 minutes so if you all have anything in other realms feel free to ask away uh, and click on the Q&A button if you're on the Google Hangout page to do that. Um, back to school wise we've kind of hit everything that I had on my list um, but we can go anywhere that you have as well. Um, trying to like truly make sure we I, I really can't think of anything we haven't hit on. Um, I will say I, I touched on characters earlier in terms of supplies and that is one area that in a sense is a soapbox for me. I did a YouTube video last year on how to save on back to school supplies in a Staples and that video actually has like the worst ratings and the most comments on it because it upset a, this huge teenage population that I didn't know watched savings videos because I said you need to stay away from character products, character pencils, character folders. I understand that kids think these things are fun but these things are expensive. If I can get pencils for 25 cents for a 10 pack of pencils and you want me to get you a two pack of Hello Kitty pencils or whatever the brand is or the singer is that your kids wanting on them, you know, this is it's a huge expense. I'd rather buy you a pack of stickers and let you decorate your own pencil than buying you the pencil. So that's one area where I hope that parents will kind of stand up and say, look, this is your budget and we're going to get everything you need inside this budget and if there's extra, okay, maybe we'll let you have a, you know, this, this and this, but we're going to compromise and we're going to work inside a budget and we're not going to just buy everything under the sun because you want this name brand or this character. So as you're doing back to school shopping, I mean, unless they're making their own money, just stand firm on some of these things. And that's really what's going to save you a ton of money. Um, a couponing question, how much time should it take for a shopping trip? I will tell you, for me, I spend about 45 minutes. So tonight, I, I technically spent 50 minutes tonight. I started right at 5 o'clock, and I left the house at 5.50. But in those 50 minutes, I prepared for two trips. We did a big Rite Aid trip and a big Target trip. Um, so it doesn't have to take a ton of time. 
I do not tend to print a lot of coupons until I need them. So when I'm sitting down to prepare for a trip, I'm cutting, oh, I'm first printing the shopping list from Southern Savers of what I want to grab. And then I'm cutting the insert coupons that correspond to that list. And I'm printing any printable coupons that correspond to that list. Today I'm multitasked and technically watch Rite Aid Video Value coupons while I printed on another window on my laptop. Um, so I could kind of knock out some time. If you're doing Rite Aid, those are little 30 second commercials that you have to watch to be able to print these store coupons. So you can, you'll learn to kind of speed yourself up in that sense. Sometimes the what takes the most amount of time for me is logging in to all these different manufacturers' websites and remembering those logins, remembering how in the world to get into them because you'll end up with different passwords. They each require something different. This one requires a capital letter. This one requires this, this, whatever. But um, giving yourself some sort of um, password, like Passbook, there are some apps that you can put in, as extensions on Firefox and Chrome that will let you do that so you can quickly remember what those passwords are. If you, uh, you know, if you've forgotten or the page has forgotten you, but that's where I end up killing the most time. Oh, I can't remember how to get into this page, and I've got to do the forget password, and I've got to this step after this step. Um, so it's trying to, you know, speed that process along is where, right now, it's my focus. How do I, how do I fix that? But I would urge you to just try to get onto a 45-minute or less time schedule. For most trips, it doesn't need to take longer than that. Some of it will depend on how you organize your coupons, though. Um, how do we save on backpacks? It's a great question, Anne. Um, with backpacks, we're seeing deals already. Staples ran like 25% off all backpacks last week. But backpacks, so computers, I don't want to buy until August, or I don't want to buy after August 15th. Backpacks are a last minute purchase you will get the best deal on a backpack the longer you wait to purchase it because backpacks are the one thing that they don't keep in stock all year. Staples doesn't have rows and rows and rows of backpacks all year long. They may have two or three. They want to move these and they don't want to have to send them back to the warehouse. They can't really sell this year's backpacks next year. They're going to get dusty. They're going to it just becomes a liability for them. They end up actually donating a lot of what they don't sell they want to sell it to you. So those last weeks in August, we're going to actually see backpacks hit 50%. We saw 75%. And then what we ended up seeing is them offer backpacks completely free after rewards last year. That's the time I want to grab a backpack. If you didn't, if you spent more, they were still offering up to like $25 in Staples rewards for a backpack. Um, so if I were you, it's waiting. It's waiting until kind of the last possible minute to grab that backpack. You're going to get a great one at a pretty amazing price, pairing in the fact that these stores just want to get rid of them and not be stuck with them when the season is over. Um, now, if you're looking for a very, very specific backpack, that obviously isn't going to work because uh, you're going to be stuck with whatever the supply is when the sale time is there. Can you use a buy one get one coupon and two money off coupons in Target? If not, what stores can you do this on? So um, I guess it, the answer is kind of it depends. If we're talking all manufacturers coupons there, um, probably not. If you're wanting to buy two items and use three manufacturers coupons on those two products, you can't do that if they're all at any store. It's not going to work at any store. If you're wanting to use a store buy one get one coupon and two manufacturers coupons, can I do that? Yes, at pretty much every store. Uh, they all, always allow the store coupon with the manufacturers coupons. And if the store is the BOGO and the manufacturer is the money off or the other way around, um, if we're not dealing with three manufacturers than most stores. If you're talking three manufacturers and two products, no stores. Not going to work anywhere. Uh, some stores would allow you to use a buy one get one coupon and, a, and one 
you know, one dollar off or two dollar off on the product that's still full price. But even then, those coupons are starting to beep now. The buy one get ones are coded to work for two products. They're looking for two products, and if you try to use a second coupon, it's it's starting to beep in pretty much every store. Um, I always donate a ton of extra supplies I get for free, and in the past I've donated to veterans, homes, and churches. Any suggestions? Um, now, Kayla, I, I don't necessarily know whether you're asking for suggestions on where to donate or what to donate. Um, if you're saying, you know, where to donate and you're grabbing all these extra supplies for school supplies, I first just look in the stores. I would say 95% of the stores that are out have a bin in them to just donate school supplies right there. They're all running school supply drives. We're also seeing some fun places. So if you want to donate and get something back, um, I, oh, I, now that I'm trying to remember it, the name is escaping me. I want to say it's Regis uh, Hair Schools. Uh, I might be wrong on that name. You can look back on Southern Savers under Back to School Deals and you'll see it. It's something that we posted last Friday. Um, but if you bring in school supplies, you can get free haircuts and free eyebrow waxings and free manicures and pedicures at some um, beauty schools. So you can kind of turn your charity into some a fun moment for you. Uh, but churches are a, probably a great option. A ton of churches do back to school supply drives. In terms of what to buy, focus on the younger kids' products, pencils, crayons, markers, filler paper, spiral notebooks, binders. Uh, don't go big because most of those smaller end products, they really do work for all age groups. Uh, and the older kids needing you know, the more expensive calculators and whatnot, a lot of times schools have some of those more expensive products that they can borrow. The teacher will have a supply of calculators for folks that don't have a calculator. Um, so just stick with the really, really cheap and uh, not, you know what I mean, like the, the smaller, cheaper items um, instead of the more expensive items. Do I have a buy price pod for pods laundry detergent? Allison, honestly, it just is never going to be the same great price as liquid or powder. Um, for me, laundry detergent, just I would more say let's make a buy price per load. And that's where the pods end up killing you, is that very rarely can you get them as cheap as uh, a bottle that has more loads in it than the bag of, of pods. But for me, laundry detergent, I don't want to pay more than maybe nine cents a load on a really rough moment, but I'm more like a five cents a load kind of girl. And we only purchase all or tied because I can get really great deals on all, all the time. Um, very rarely do I buy Tide if there's a crazy deal, which we have seen some in the last few weeks, but um, I can get all for less than five cents a load almost every time it's on sale. And I can't tell you the last time we saw pods on sale that cheap. Um, for a 16 count bag to be able to get them for less than a dollar, it just, it's a rare, rare moment. Um, so I would push you away from them if you love them. Um, I guess your best price is probably at, at Target this week. They're running a gift card deal with Tide Pods, and there is a $2 off coupon. Um, so you could grab the gift card deal and use the coupon with it. Uh, but there, we don't see that great of deals on them. Sorry. Um, Jeremy says, you're unable to find the Reinventing Beauty magazine that's mentioned in the videos. Um, those videos actually, Jeremy, while well, they just hit YouTube, one of the, the really long one that just kind of went up on YouTube, it's actually like a year and a half old. And CBS isn't making the Reinventing Beauty magazine anymore. They stopped last fall putting them in stores. However, when you check out, you may find that your store has kind of like a, let's see, I have a piece of paper, um, kind of like a half sheet fold in half of coupons um, that they will put in your bag or they'll have at the register. They look um, 
like cardstock. They're harder and they're matte colored. That is what used to go in those reinventing beauty magazines. The humorous thing is CVS stopped making them. Well, Walgreens is making them now. So if you have a Walgreens in your area, it's not called reinventing beauty. It has a different name, but it is a beauty magazine. It is sold in the makeup section of Walgreens, same 99 cent price, and is filled with manufacturer's coupons. So it can be a great Walgreens filler item if you're needing another product to be able to use more coupons. Um, not quite the answer you wanted, but there is a backup at least. Uh, do I have any issues with the Rite Aid Video Value coupons? I watch them and then no coupons pop up. I've emailed them three times and still no solution. Now, I don't know what kind of computer you're using. Um, I'm a Mac person. I will tell you today I was watching some and my computer was on mute and I could watch them and watch them and watch them and no coupon would pop up as long as it was on, as it was on mute. And this was the first time that this has ever happened to me because I have been known to mute Rite Aid video values in the past. Um, but as soon as I unmuted it and watched the video again, the coupon popped up and saved um, to my account for me to print later. So I don't know if it's something that simple <laughs> that you're just not listening to them uh, and it's new software on their end. But the other thing I would try is switching web browsers. I mean, it's kind of the classic how to make something print list that I go through with folks. Um, but switching web browsers, making sure that you have a current version of Flash on your computer, because they do use Flash um, programming on that page. Uh, in terms of web browsers, I am a big Firefox or Chrome girl. I am not a big Internet Explorer girl. Anyone in the web world would just tell you to give up on Internet Explorer. You'll have a much happier web experience when you leave and you switch to Chrome or Firefox. Um, so trying that would be the easiest option first, seeing if those work, making sure that you're you know, actually listening to them. And if that's not working, I don't, I don't really know. Um, I mean, it really would be to email them. And if they're not coming up with answers, it might be that that computer is just not going to be able to get them. Trying on a different computer even, seeing if it's something related to that. Sorry um, for not having a more specific answer for you. Um, okay, well that's everything that's in the questions queue and we're here at 930. If you guys have anything that we didn't cover question-wise, always feel free to email me, jenny at southernsavers.com. We are going to do this again next week. Haven't decided the topic, so if you have something in particular you want us to talk about, uh, but it might just be a general, just ask whatever question you have as well um, kind of video. So same time, 8.30 uh, next Monday night. You guys have a great night and a great week.